Welcome to Read the Bible with me with Steve Hernandez. Me? You know I'm Steve Hernandez. Please rate and review us over at YouTube. Subscribe here, huh? Please. And uh, rate and review us over at the Apple Podcast app. Why not? Leave a review. And we'll read it next week. How about that? Is that a deal or is that a deal, huh? Rate and review us at Spotify. You know, Tell your friends, for God's sake. We'll have Patreon information next week. And let me tell you something about the Patreon. I'm not like some guy who's like thinking back end. I'm almost created this whole thing to have a Patreon because I have so many podcast ideas. I have so much fun thing I want to do, and I'm tired of giving it away for free. God, going on 10 years now (laughs) of giving away things for free. You heard that little giggle, (laughs) and you know who the giggle belongs to. Of course, I'm talking about super producer Gerardo. Alarcon. Yeah, Gerardo. You said it right. <laughs> I wrote it down phonetically. I guess I've been saying Gerardo's name wrong. Uh, th- thankfully, he pointed it out, and I've written it down. Ph- say it with the, put that butter on it like you do, with the roll. Gerardo the Larcon. Ooh, that's nice. I love that. Yeah, I can barely tell you were part French. Uh, and I am, you could definitely tell I'm third generation Mexican. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gerardo, I'm doing incredible. Went to two back-to-back Dodger games. And then last night, of course, was Mexican Heritage Night. I didn't know what to think. I was nervous going Yeah, there. Yeah, I definitely wanted the jersey. I got the jersey. You saw it on Instagram, at hernia. Oh, um, dude, it was tiny. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that tiny. It was, it was nicer than I thought it was going to be. But they were handing out XLs and stuff. It fits from here. But then I got my big fat belly. What are you going to do? I had to, I had to do it. Now, a couple funny things happened. On it. I mean, first off. I didn't know what to expect, but I wanted to go for the jersey, and I'm telling you, it was jam-packed, and the vibe there was fucking amazing. Playoff baseball uh, for, a, for a game against the fucking Pittsburgh Pirates. It was electric in there. Everyone <laughs> joking, having a fucking good time. It made me, like, love. I was like, oh, yeah, this is why I love my fucking people. We know how to have a good time. Nobody gives a fuck about baseball here. <laughs> it truly was during, um, during the seventh inning stretch where you say, take me out to the ball game. Nobody knew the fucking words. <laughs> and they didn't know that you sing it a second time. If you don't know, on um, Take Me Out for the Ball Game, the second you do it again and you take it up a notch and you go, Take me up to the ball. Nah, they were done. They're like, Fuck this. Let's go. People started leaving afterwards. The kids were there. Kids were screaming, crying. A couple of awesome things happened. At some point, they. Um, they announced on the screen, they were like, hey, we're giving vaccine shots out here right now. You know, oh, if yeah. you want to do that, and it gets all quiet and shit. That's all Mexicans. They're like, we're going to get to And I was like, yeah. I cheered all loud. It was Nobody was cheering. It was just me. I was like, yeah. I was like, get the fucking shot, you cowards. And this older Mexican lady, like a 67-year-old mom, she she started laughing. She's like, you tell him. Tell him. And she gave me a high five. I was like, yeah. This is like what you do that kind of stuff for. Yeah. And then by later on the night, every Everyone's wasted and shit. And uh, there was a Mexican woman like like three rows down there. She was just standing up talking to everyone. We were in the reserve. So kind of the not the very upper deck, but right in the middle. She was just like, yeah, I'm Mexican. She's like, some people say I'm too Mexican. You know, <laughs> I'm from Whittier. They say I'm too much. She was just no game was going on. She was just talking to everybody about how Mexican she was. And everyone was like, yeah, yeah, tell him, tell him. I was like, tell him. So fun. The jersey's great. Uh, Very stoked to have it. Uh, Let's do a little thing. As you know, part of this podcast, uh, YouTube show, is to check in my former church. Uh, They turned over Faith Community Church. They turned it into Faith Church. Turned it over to the son of the pastor, a man that was my friend in high school, a man by the name of Dan Reeve, who now is one of the worst preachers I've ever seen. (laughs) Not only that, but they post, I follow them now, Faith, uh, I think it's called Go To Faith. Uh, on Instagram and every now and then they'll post like an inspirational message or a phrase Try to push, push this one up this one bothered me I had to post it on my stories this one really bothered me yes when Check. you're at your worst God is still at his best read it to me one more time please when you're or should I do it like a preacher yes yes <laughs> when you're at your worst yes God is still at his best now here's the implication is that and they don't say this, but the inference is, okay, you're doing bad, but it's okay. Cause God's doing good. But the way this comes out, 
God doesn't give a fuck about you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm poor. I'm hurting. Guess who's doing fine? God. <laughs> and guess, yeah, okay, we get it. You're God. The living God. The most powerful thing being on the universe. I'm hurting over my divorce. And this motherfucker's just still rubbing it in my face. <laughs> I don't know who's that supposed to comfort. Uh, Dan will post this. Chad Veach posts this stuff. All these kind of pastors likes to post a thing. That almost sounds like it would be, oh, that's a powerful statement. But there's absolutely nothing powerful. It's a stupid thing to say. Mm -hmm. It's a name. Uh, I've been getting a lot of feedback on that. Uh, also, check out, if you go to the thing, check out his shoes that he's wearing. They're very nice shoes. Dan Reeve and his dad did this, too. They must have a, um, uh, what do you call those people that dress you? A stylist. Oh, yeah. They must have a stylist. Because it's always like this high-end, like... Weird tight pants, like distressed jeans, fancy shoes, like weird jackets. They have the money, so they're buying the shit. But the guy doesn't, you know, you shouldn't be wearing, you should not, Jesus would not wear those shoes. WW, what would Jesus wear? Not those fucking <laughs> shoes, Dan Reeve. Bad shoes. Yeah, and his shoes are like, uh, they're like punk rock shoes. They're not. It's like a weird kind of boat shoe loafer yeah. like you would wear to like the tennis club <laughs> yeah. or, you know, yeah, to, you know, wear a sweater over you thing, which I'm not sure. I know Jim Reeve has a house near the beach. Dan may have a house next door driving into West Covina, just picking up the offering baskets from all the working class Mexicans and whites <laughs> then heading back to the beach, slipping in those shoes. No one's talking to this guy, which brings me to my next point. Let's play them this Instagram story because I've got some I've got some real beef with this uh, Instagram store it really bothered me. Let it let it play again because it goes back to back. That's his wife. <laughs> if you look at that, there's young people on stage with pom poms, <laughs> and they're saying. Don't live life alone. And Dan Reeves saying, don't live life alone. Don't. So, you know, you're supposed to go to this church. You've been molested. You know what I mean? You, you don't have a job. You have an alcohol problem. Uh, you're struggling with odd sexual stuff. And you go to this and you see these, these beacons of hope, these white people, you know. Obviously, they have money. Look at his shoes. This guy's got a boat, at least. Uh, and they're just, you see young people that are brown and Mexican. They use these. Check their Instagram out, too. Yeah. Always black people, Asian people, everything. They're like, oh, yeah, this is, they're giving away ice cream afterwards. And then you're watching. You're fucking struggling. You're bipolar. You're struggling. <laughs> and you're watching young people with pom-poms <laughs> shaking it at you, giving you hope with the fucking pom-poms. <laughs> and then Dan Reeves, little blonde wife, and uh, him screaming out, don't live life alone. Don't live life alone. Let me tell you something. And this is a fact. I don't even know if it's true, but I know his dad. And I do kind of know Dan Reeve from even 20 years ago when we were in college or high school. We grew up together. The man has no friends. <laughs> he has zero friends. I'm not saying this that people wouldn't want to be his friend. The man has zero friends. What he does is go straight home, him and his wife. His wife massages his back like this and shit. He doesn't have anybody he talks to because I don't think he's like a real kind of human being. That's the kind of guy Dan has always been. He's like a robot. Um, he doesn't have anyone he's opening his heart to. Maybe his wife. I'll give him that. But for these people to tell people, oh, yeah, come be a part of our community. Come join all these other brown people and white people. Look at the pom-pom people. These people <laughs> are going to be your friends. Um, if you're very poor, they won't be your friends. Nobody wants to hang out with anybody that poor. It's sad. These aren't real Christians, folks. They're people who uh, want to live a healthy, fun life and shit like that, which sometimes messes up with Christianity. True Christianity, you know, like Christ and shit, you're going to have to be poor. Christ calls us to give people the shirt off our back and shit. Nah, <laughs> that's no. why I'm not a Christian, okay? No. I like this shirt. I'm not going <laughs> to give it to you, this stranger, okay? Uh, but Dan says that you, should, you definitely should. Uh, Dan does not have friends. Anybody who knows Dan knows knows this true. So this guy who's preaching this shit says, don't live life alone. Don't live a life alone. And then they go live the Reeves off in some fucking beach town. Mm -hmm. um, and then here's the thing, too, is that this, which is what, what upsets me is that people will go there searching for Christ. They'll see this. They'll join the church. They'll try to be like everybody else, but they got real world problems and then they feel guilty and feel bad. And they think because they have those real world problems, they have to do with money. They have to do with uh, sins handed down from their father and their mother, shit that's gonna take a long time to fucking fix. But these fucking pom pom people there, then they feel bad about it. Then they feel like they don't have access to God's love. 
infuriating. The, the real bad news this week, of course, though, is I finally talked to my mom about the vaccine. Now, uh, I don't know if you guys know about this, but my mom uh, famously is not getting the vaccine because she mainlines Fox News <laughs> and she mainlines Christian television. And uh, I've known this about my mom. She's she's a, She believes she's a prophet. Sometimes she does have great gifts. I'm not going to say that. My mom, about once a month or so, we have these long conversations about God and about how to live our lives and everything. Very strict. She's very by the by, by the by the Bible, but she also is like, I, I think in many ways a wise woman, but in the past few years, she started mainlining uh, Fox television with her husband, who's a good man. These are good working class, barely scraping by people that have uh, completely been brainwashed by a lot of things. She voted for Trump. Uh, I, 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 she didn't tell me that. A lot of these things we don't talk about because we would just get in big fights. But I saw that shit on a Facebook story. I saw, yeah, I saw it on a Facebook story. Uh, she was in Glendora and they were at a Trump sign. And I felt, I almost, I'm telling you, I almost felt bad for my mom because um, she was like, it's true. You guessed it. She wasn't even like stoked, which I liked. She was like, we're voting for Trump. And she was, it was which is embarrassing. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the man's a, a rapist. He's a terrible person. He lies to people. All these kind of terrible things. But you can't talk to them about it. Um, Did I tell you about when my dad got drunk and uh, my, my lawyer cousin shared in the group chat, fuck Trump, like written on the side of the street? Where's, where's your cousin a lawyer at? In Los Angeles County. Oh, so smart person. She's right? very smart. Yes. She went to Loyola Academy or whatever. Yeah, yeah it's in a great Santa school. Monica. Yeah. All right, she said fuck Trump. She's, she, there was, there, it was during, uh, like, at the end of the uh, George Floyd protest, kind of like hype. Yes. And uh, she took a video of fuck Trump on the side of the street and sent it to the group chat. And my dad was drunk. <laughs> and he was like, he, was, he responded in all caps. was like, what the fuck was this bullshit? <laughs> did, did it erupt the, the whole? Uh, no, it, she, he was it? like, was let's not it. share this in the group chat. It's like 30 people in my family yeah, in this yeah. group chat. And yeah. she put that in there, which obviously, yeah, don't share that yes. in the group chat. Yes. But my dad was also drunk. Yeah. The next day I, I called my dad. I was like, hey, uh, you know, you got a little crazy last night, right? He's like, yeah, he was all hung over. <laughs> He's like, but at the same time, he stuck by what he says. Like, yeah, but that's some bullshit. Why would she share that in the family chat? You know? Yeah, I mean, I'm very grateful that my dad. Thank. I mean, I will never thank Trump enough for calling yeah. Mexicans rapists. Thank you, Trump, <laughs> because uh, my dad was in the military. He's one of these kind of Mexicans, probably like your your dad is, and like a lot of Mexicans are from a a certain generation where I know my dad when he. Um, got here from Ohio. They, uh, they, they moved here from Ohio. He just spoke, spoke Spanish, kindergarten, first grade. Right when he started to come to school here in Los Angeles, uh, they would hit at them if they spoke Spanish. It was bad. Like yeah. uh, They were like literally beat the shit out of them at school if they spoke Spanish. So my dad's from the generation that was like, all right, my kids aren't going to speak Spanish. Uh, I'm American. I'm proud American. I'm going to make sure that, that they don't go through anything like this too. So I never learned Spanish, but... My dad was always like, I'm a proud American. He would say, I'm not a Mexican-American. I'm an American-Mexican. He's very proud, served his country, that kind of thing. Um, which, you know, a, a lot of Mexicans are that way. Uh, thankfully, when Trump called us rapists, my dad had enough self-respect to be like, fuck this guy. And he's truly, my dad, if you met him, even he, thank God he's out. But there was a while, if you met my dad, Donald Trump was going to come up very soon <laughs> and you would think that they dated for a little while that they fucked because my dad was pissed <laughs> yeah. and that Donald Trump broke up with him uh, because <laughs> he fucking hated Donald Trump and he has nothing but time on his hands. He's retired. So that full studying Trump, reading books about his grandpa, he's like, you don't know about Donald Trump's grandpa and like all this history. <laughs> I'm like, dad, you got to give it a fucking break on this Donald Trump shit. Luckily, my dad hates Donald Trump. My mom does not hate Donald Trump. Um, but she's just, it came up. Uh, she called me and I love my mom. I'm not going to like, I'm not looking to, she's 65 years old. I'm not looking to try to prove a point at this point. She's not going to change. My mom is hooked on Christ. And for <laughs> her, that includes... Uh, for this point in her life, it includes Fox News and shit. I know she's trying to grow as a person. She really is. I believe that. But she's just fucking hooked on God. She's lived such a shitty life that, that without God, 
she, I think if she looked at her life without God and that there's a plan and shit, she would have a lot of reasons to be very sad about her life. But because she has God and Christ and church and all that shit, she does look at it as a plan. And so I know my mom feels this way about God and religion and all those things. I can't at this point, even if I wanted to, I couldn't take it, take away from her. It's so funny. We got in some fight like a few months ago. I don't, I don't want to get into it. Why? But it, it, we got into like a pretty big like fight. And uh, I said, mom, you're just using God as a crutch. And she said, but what a crutch. <laughs> <laughs> but what a crutch. I mean, I mean, I started laughing because I'm like, what a hysterical answer, which is like, I guess you're supposed to lean on God too. So whatever. So, so I told her, she's like, when is the Chatterbox show? If you don't know, I host one of the best shows in Los Angeles or I help produce it with Lisa Chanu, Scott Lurz and, and my wife, Julia Loken. And uh, she said, when's Chatterbox coming back? And I was like, we don't know. Uh, I could start this monthly, which you're going to hear about, called Hernia on September 1st here in L.A. Uh, I'm going to start my monthly, but I can require vax cards there. A lot of comics are uncomfortable if you don't know about doing shows where there's not vaccinated people. They don't want to get sick. I was like, I can do vax cards in L.A. I can't do vax cards in Covina because people in Covina aren't really getting the vaccine. And she was like, she's, I was like, and I don't want anyone to get sick. And she went, oh. She like laughed. She couldn't, <laughs> she couldn't help herself. I mean, she was like, oh. like to me, if people were afraid uh, that they were going to get sick. And then then I was like, mom, this is a real thing. And, and if you don't know, which I don't know why you would, unless you listen to my other podcasts and stuff. My mom's brother and her sister died from COVID last January. So this isn't like. When I'm saying I want my mom to get the vaccine, it's not whatever opinions you have or anything. I know for a fact that her siblings died from it. Yeah. That she has a very good chance of dying from this shit. She works at a hospital. There's no reason why she's not this winter going to die from it if she does <laughs> not get this vaccine. And so we're going crazy. I'm like, and she started. It's funny. I, we don't really know what they're hearing because I don't listen to that shit. But she did say, Steve, you know what? At some point, I might get it, I think, because of her job. And she's like, and I just want you to know, if I die from it, I know where I'm going. I know that. So she thinks that if she gets the vaccine, it's going to kill her. That's what they're telling people on Fox News and stuff. I'm like, fuck, I can't. You know, when you're and when you're me and I'm not the smartest guy, I think I'm smart. I read books and shit, but I don't know anything about vaccines. If you're anybody, if you're experiencing this with your loved ones and stuff, what I'm going to say facts to her. She's going to say what she thinks is facts to me. I don't know shit about vaccines, so I'm going to listen to 95 percent of scientists. And I said, hey, mom, this is it's not perfect. It's the best we got right now. Nothing's going to happen. It, it doesn't. It's not going to change anything. I, I do hope she gets it before. But this is the first time all these months that we've talked about it. So. I don't know. I, I guess I'm glad. I, I think the, the big mistake that we made for the rollout for vaccines and Mexicans is that we talked about science maybe a little bit too much <laughs> and tied it to science when we could have done something else. Uh, I don't know if you have any Mexicans in your life, but we love monsters and magic. And uh, I mean, I love that about our people. Uh, truly, they, they've grasped onto different parts of Catholicism. We love demons. We love all that kind of shit. Brujeria. Yeah, yeah all yep. of it. When, they, when somebody first came up with the idea of the chubacabra, someone started to explain it and they were like, we're in. You know, they were like, <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that thing exists, okay? They love it. We love all of that shit. We should have said the vaccine was like, um, I don't know, from like, a, from like the blood of a magwai or something. From Gremlins? Do you yeah. have you seen Gremlins? I've never seen Gremlins. But what, what, what the fuck are you doing not seeing Gremlins? Yeah, I, what, 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 why? I don't. I really don't understand that. What's well, going I, on? I do have to say that this is the first time somebody's gotten very upset that I haven't seen Gremlins. Gremlins is very important to my family, and I also think that it's very important to Mexicans. Right into to say that comment to see if it's been. <laughs> it's very important to my family of little kids and all this stuff. It's almost like when you're growing up. That was the thing where you come become an older kid is like you see gremlins because it's kind of scary. You've seen like, OK, put up a picture of Gizmo. Yeah. Have you seen anything like you've seen? You know what he looks like, right? Let me see here. G-I-Z-M-O. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's so cute. He's yeah, pretty cute. Look at that. Look at that little face down there. <laughs> Do you know how many innocent mogwais had to die to get this vaccine, mom? And you're going to not put his blood to use? <laughs> 
That's the blood of a, that's the blood of a beautiful little creature right there. Me- I think Mexicans love gremlins. If you don't know, Mex- uh, gremlins, the whole thing is they get this little thing, Gizmo. He's so cute. But there's three rules. You can't feed him past midnight. Uh, he hates bright light and um, water will, will, will kill him. So there's these three rules. And then right away, the kid, the, the dad gets it from a, like a Chinese stereotype magic man. Like they, this can, they can do this now. But then he gives it to his son. Kid breaks all the rules. Turns into this like demon-like thing. I think Mexicans love this shit. Too. It's like, <laughs> yeah. it's like it's good, it's cute, but if you break the rules, like bad things will happen. <laughs> That's like Catholicism. It's right there. <laughs> Don't let these Mogwai blood go to, go to use. Come on, man. <laughs> Don't do that. They would have to make the vaccine red. That's like the only thing they would have to do. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Dye it red. That's yeah. what I mean. It's not, it's too like, there's nothing dramatic about it. Yeah. You know what? They got to make the, the vaccine dramatic. So when like they see the red going in or maybe bright green or something, yeah. neon green. I mean, if they told me it was the blood of Chewbacca, I would get it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> We've got to come up with a story for our people. <laughs> they think they know science. They don't know science. We don't know science. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, let's uh, let's let's get in the Bible. Let, let me say something before this is episode three. Last episode was the first time that we actually looked at the Bible, and I want to tell you very, after we recorded the episode, I was like, I felt underprepared. Now I know this. You guys listened to me last week. I know this these chapters and these verses well, but I was like, mother fuck. I was like. I think I'm going to have to fucking study my Bible again. Yeah. So all this week, uh, I read, if you don't know, too, we're reading the Joyce Meyer. We're using the Joyce Meyer book to um, go through it, too. And all this week, I I studied chapter two. There's about five verses, um, five or six verses that we're going to go over. And it's split into about four chunks where I'm going to break down those things. But... I like fucking read this shit every day this week. <laughs> I like studied this shit and like thought about it and journaled about it. Like I'm Christian again. So I don't want you, if you're a former believer, even a believer now, I don't want you to think that um, I even did it in a jokey way. But I, I feel like almost like my spirit wasn't prepared for what I felt like I needed to do. And I wanted to make up for that. So this week, uh, I've been studying the shit every day. And uh, I think I've got some pretty good stuff. I do love this book. So let's just get into it. Uh, It's broken up into four chunks. I'm going to read this first verse. This is from James chapter 1, verse 5. And that is that goes like this. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. Um. What does wisdom mean to you, Gerardo? Thanks for asking. Wisdom, <laughs> to me, uh, I would say wisdom is a lesson learned. I, I think that's that's very close. That's yeah. very close to to what the definition is, according to Joyce Meyer gave a definition. And I think years ago, because I used to love her so much, this is what I've taken in my heart. But it's basically like life experience, um, And also, what am I going to do with this knowledge? Yeah. So in our world, we have so much knowledge because of the internet now. We have access. Everybody knows everything. Just like I was talking about my mom and all these different things. We have all of this shit right there. But what are you going to do with that knowledge? And I do think that you do gain that from personal experience. I think you gain that from information. And uh, I think wisdom is that kind of thing where... um, it's funny because I, I, in my head originally when I first thought about it, I thought about knowledge. Uh, when you hear wisdom, you think kind of knowledge and that are the same, but it's not really. Because part of me is like, if I could forget the things I knew now, if I could turn off a switch, I would not want to be like this. Yeah, I would want to be a dumb motherfucker. <laughs> like truly, like a Raiders fan, like be able to get drunk and not think about things. I would want to be Republican. That's a fact. I would love it. I would love it. Republicans seem like they have so much fun. Just some dumb, like, bozo wife. I would love five kids. I want that. Give it to me. Like, a cypher, me. yeah, cyber, like cypher on the Matrix when he's just eating that steak and he goes, I know this isn't real, but I'm fucking, I'm over this because I don't like to think about this shit that much. But it's not knowledge. Um, I have this knowledge. And then wisdom is, what am I going to do with this? The Bible says right here in James chapter 1, 5, that God will give you wisdom 
Uh, that's the one thing he, he guarantees you he will give you. And um, I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm comforted by that. When, 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 with, these, with these other verses we're going to talk about, too. Remember, I'm not talking about a life of Christianity. And we don't even know if James is necessarily talking about that. Because what you and I think of as Christianity now, this was created hundreds of years after these things were written. So what James is talking about is is maybe following what the original rules of Christ were, but I'm talking about a life of God, and I use God interchangeably with art even. So I'm talking about the life of an artist. And so oftentimes I pray like I don't know uh, I don't know what to do. Life wasn't like that when I was younger. I always knew what to do. But for instance, I'm starting this new show. It's called Hernia on September 1st at the Yard Theater at nine o'clock. Uh, get your tickets. Follow me on Instagram, all that stuff. Get your tickets. We got to put this one out before that. Too. <laughs> <laughs> this might be out a few days, but the lineup's sick and stuff. But we've been figuring out... Well, you know, what are we going to do about this stuff? Uh, there's this new variant going on. Um, I don't want to be irresponsible. I would hate to get somebody sick or any of that kind of bullshit. But at the same time, too, I think we're looking at this is going to be what the world looks like for the next couple of years. I don't think anything's going to change unless things get worse to new variants, that kind of thing. So what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to shut down our lives? To me, comedy is, isn't is just a profession that I'm going after, but it is art. It is being together with people. It's trying to explore and make sense of the world around us, too. So Julie and I, my wife, talked a bunch. We talked to other comics, and uh, we, we prayed about it. And I believe with wisdom, we made the decision to do this with Vax cards, and, and hopefully everyone's fine. But also... I mean, we, we made a decision. It was with wisdom, hopefully. Um, the, and uh, you know what? Let me read this. It's so funny because <laughs> um, I'm kind of going, I'm skipping ahead right here. But um, Joyce Meyer kind of put in this, I think it's for the next verses. Yeah, verses six through eight. She just put eight steps to a solid decision. A lot of pastors, you'll see this, people like Chad Veach, Joyce Myers, other pastors will just give you lessons about life that they think, and they kind of just don't really have anything to do with the Bible or anything like this. I also don't know if Christ would do these things either. They're just kind of like positive life lessons. And for some reason in her book on page 25, she wrote eight steps to a solid decision. And these are fucking really great. So this isn't Christ centered or anything, but Joyce Meyer put this in here. <laughs> Number one, pray, which means meditate or think about the thing. Number two, consider all your options. You should always do that. Uh, number three, write down the advantages and disadvantages of each one. If you're dating someone, if you want to become a boyfriend or girlfriend, should you marry this one? Write down the good and the bad things. Uh, four, make a choice. Five, don't make an important decision when you're emotional because it probably won't be a good one. Ger <laughs> Gerardo knows not to do that. He's lost a lot of good relationships. No, 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 come on. <laughs> I'm like, move it on, move it on, move it on. Sleep on the decision. See you after, if you have peace the next morning. This is, these are all great de decisions. Seven, if you feel you need confirmation about this decision, check with a mature, trusted Christian professional or friend. Eight, start taking action. Make the decision. Do it. Check with people you trust around you. These are all rational. This is what I'm talking about with the Bible and some of this stuff. Is like that's These are good ideas. <laughs> uh, I think one thing with wisdom uh, that people don't do and that people need to do. I know I do it more the older I get to, but is it's important to say there's a very good chance I may be wrong. And almost all the things I do, interpersonal relationships, uh, making the decision about the show and stuff, uh, something I've learned because I've been wrong before so many fucking times is that when you're starting off, always be open that you're making them that you're making mistakes that there's holes in your arguments and to not be defensive when you ask your friends people that trust you trust about them and they tell you things that you may consider bad, bad feedback so uh i love that verse let's move on to the the second point the, 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 we'll call this one don't doubt god these are verses six and seven uh and they go but when he asks he's referring to wisdom but when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. <laughs> he is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. I, I like that. I mean, it's like, come on, James, fucking chill out, bro. I love that he goes, don't you dare doubt that God won't give you wisdom. I guess that's the inference in it. Um, but I think that is... 
And I, and Gerardo, I don't know if you've gotten to the place. I I feel I know you. We talk a lot, but uh, I'm 43 years old now. I feel like even I'm solidifying what my principles are, what I want out of life. You know, we talk about professional stuff all the time. About am I going to give up uh, the assurance of a paycheck? so I can have complete freedom, like those kind of things. I think those principles are forming in that you're, you're at that place where you're forming those for yourself, right? Yeah. I mean, but when, with all this talk about wisdom, it's uh, it, I go back to the serenity prayer. Like in the last episodes, I've gone back to sobriety and it's uh, God grant me the serenity to uh, what is it called? To uh, God gives, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things I can and the wisdom yes. to know the difference. Yes. And uh, in in all the aspects of life, whether it's business or personal, uh, I feel like it's like, a, I don't know, like you were saying about making a decision uh, in the moment, you know, it, it would be nice to like do all the eight steps of going home, sleeping on it. Uh, but you know, that's money on the table, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't make every decision like that, yeah. but for big decisions on mm-hmm. life, I think it's important. I've for me, I'm a I'm a I'm an Aries. I'm an Aries sun. I'm yeah. an Aries moon, Libra rising, uh, and I'm very much fire, hot headed. Yeah, I want to do things right away. Yeah. I want to do things now, um, and I've found that that's that it works a lot of times. I work from my gut. And uh, my gut's right a a lot. But when you're dealing with people and when you're dealing with big decisions, it's almost like, just wait, just wait. I mean, uh, uh, you know, there's no reason to rush into this. Uh, And usually, like, I'm always happy that I waited for a big decision as as long as you can. Typically, I guess until, you know, there, there are people who wait too long and they procrastinate and stuff. I'm not that kind of guy. I usually, like, I've been wanting to do this show for A year and a half, two years now. I mean, truly, before the pandemic, I've been sitting on this idea and I kept waiting and waiting and waiting. And I'm grateful that we're in the position right now. I think we're making the show that we want to make. Mm -hmm. Uh, But this one idea was so good and it just never felt right. And then finally, I feel like it's been released. It feels right. When James is talking about don't be double minded, what he's saying is figure out what you believe, why you believe it, what your values are. Line up your life and your actions that way. Have faith that life is going to work out according to those things you believe, Uh, especially, you know, if they're the things of God, if they're they're that kind of a a holy thing. And uh, don't doubt that shit. And it it gets hard sometimes. It gets hard being a 43-year-old bartender in Covina uh, that was senior class president. And sometimes (laughs) people from your high school walk in the bar and they see you bartending and then they look sad. (laughs) Uh, but but remember that you're all doing this for a reason have faith that it's going to work out that way um and i feel like i'm watching pastor steve oh my god i mean you know whatever okay i'm sorry i don't know what to tell you i'm just saying you gotta have faith that way or else you're just gonna be miserable that's what being double-minded is if you have one foot in each thing you're going to be miserable. Mm. Do line up your way, your life the way you want it to be. Have faith that it's going to pan out that way. This, uh, let's go move on to these next verses. Ooh, I love this shit. <clears throat> this is verse nine. The brother in humble circumstances ought to take pride in his high position, but the one who is rich should take pride in his low position because he will pass away like a wildflower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers. The plant, it, its blossoms and falls, its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich man will fade away even while he goes about his business. And all James is saying right here is that rich people ain't shit. <laughs> That's really in the fucking Bible. <laughs> Jesus said it. Everyone, rich people ain't shit, uh, which is hard for rich people to hear. It's hard for in America where we worship capitalism. Rich people think that because they have a lot of money, because they have succeeded maybe in their chosen field, because they inherited a lot of money, that means that they know everything. And that very thing, I I believe, and Christ preached this too, is is the very thing that keeps people from God because it... it allows us to not rely on anything outside of ourselves. Now, there's some things that are true about rich people. Uh, the only thing that that's true about rich people is they have money, they know how to keep it, some of them know how to make it. 
It doesn't mean that they did this by any, you know, it doesn't, it could mean that they stole an idea from someone. It could be mean that they are taking advantage of people and not paying them a living wage. Um, it could mean that uh, they got a lot of money from their parents when they died. It could mean that they're cheap. So here in America, we think it means so much that you have a lot of money. But but we know also that to get a lot of money, oftentimes you're taking advantage of people. You're being a bad person. Jesus said that it's easier for a camel to get through the eye of a needle that, that, than for a rich person to get to the kingdom of God. Um, these verses are, are, are clear to that, too, where James is saying rich people don't know shit about the ways of God, and they definitely don't know shit about art. You know what, dude? I'm going to come back to this uh, this post on God to faith. <laughs> when you're at your worst, God is still at his best. Yes. Like, if you drop the word still, yes. just like a preacher could, you yeah. know? If you're at your worst, God is at his best. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, you can't be rich, homie. Yeah. You can't, you have to, like, I have this philosophy of life that we enjoy suffering. Yes. I feel like heaven, in my opinion, whatever, you know, just that colloquial term of heaven, utopia, if you will. Yeah. Is perfection. And we seek imperfection when perfect. Right. That's my flaw. Sorry. Anyways. But yeah, no, no, no. Keep you know talking. I mean? yeah, you know, the, the Matrix, uh, you've seen the Matrix trilogy. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a former youth pastor. I got to keep bringing up that Matrix for, you know, the Matrix changed the youth pastor's lives. Bro. First time I saw Matrix, I think I was like 20 years old or something like that. And I was already preaching. I was like, these kids aren't going to know what hit them on Sunday. I'm like, you know, Neo's Christ, fool. Like, you know, Morpheus is John the Baptist. Like, I was the just white going, rabbit yeah. is the Holy Spirit. But if you don't, if you do remember the second, uh, on the second one, when he meets the architect at the end, yeah. which when I saw it, I, I felt like it was like kind of clunky for a movie. But I think about it all the time. And the architect says, oh, you're actually like the fourth version of Christ. Um, we made this other thing before, but we made it too good and people didn't like it. People yeah. didn't like not having the struggle or anything. I do. I don't know if, I, I mean, that, that kind of thing about whether or not it's like, uh, will create things. But I, I do think that, you know, we know that rich people are, are as miserable as we are oftentimes, sometimes more because they're super rich in their big house alone because they're bastards oftentimes or they think they're so right they've cut out their family they've done a lot of fucked up shit like that so they're oftentimes just as miserable if not more than people who don't have a lot of money um the the uh, uh, my, my thing is i listen i don't hate rich people oftentimes they were born that way you know? yeah. how could i hate them you know <laughs> yeah. uh i i have some rich friends i've got people who were born into money i've got people who've got money through the entertainment business and all that kind of things. Um, don't think that we hate you, but if you like want to be truly artistic and if you truly want to have a relationship with God, with, um, you know, whatever's holy, with uh, this divine being or whatever that thing is, uh, it, it's going to be very hard. But, you know, I'm not going to throw you to the wolves here at Read the Bible with me. I've come up with some tips for uh, all all my rich friends out there, if you're rich and you're not my friends, I don't hate you. But these are just a few rules that can help you to um, to to kind of be a better person. Number one, don't lie about it. Don't lie about it. You will slip. We will catch you. You'll order an appetizer right there. That's the key right there. Right away, I'll be like, what the, <laughs> what the fuck is going on right now? This guy's ordering multiple apps. <laughs> There's nothing. I'm telling you, uh, Julia, uh, there's nothing like going to with my wife's parents. And, you know, at first, if you've never dated a white woman, you're very scared. You know, if you're a brown person, you know, you're very scared. You don't want to order. You're like, oh, I'll have water. You won't even order the Coke. You know what I mean? You're just scared. Oh, I'll have water. Now that I'm married to, to a, this beautiful white woman with my beautiful white family now, crack open that menu. I'm like, all right, Jim. That's her, her dad, James. All right, Jimbo. What are we going to do here for apps? You know, get a couple of these bruschettas, you know, get the app sampler. I'll, I'll take a, I'll take a lemonade. I'll take another lemonade. I don't care if there's free refills. I don't drink alcohol. <laughs> Pop it on the bill, baby. Uh, don't lie about it, okay? You don't have to brag about it or anything, but I know rich people here in Hollywood, too, where you don't know anything about what's going on, and then you'll see the Christmas pick, and it's like, oh, their parents have a mansion, and you're trying to act like you're like me. You ain't like me, fool. I work at a bar three nights a week. I'm 43 years old. I appear to be a failure. <laughs> 
Don't lie about it. Number two, buy lunch every other time for your regular person friends, okay? I, this isn't an every time thing. I know I would imagine if I was a rich person, I would start to feel taken advantage of sometimes. You don't have to buy it every time, but buy it every other time. Don't say why, don't do anything. Just be like, I got this one. And then the other, every other time you could be like, let's split it. That's fine. But don't even talk about it. Just fucking buy the thing, all right? And that, that's going to help put some things. Number three, if you have a vacation home or an Airbnb, give it to your poor friends two or three times a year. Just say, hey, I've got some availability right here. I, it looks like you and your honey would love to get away to Lake Arrowhead or to Big Bear or to Palm Springs. And without charging them or anything, just say, take it. Uh, you'll just have to pay the, the, the maid fee. It's $80. I hope you don't mind. And I'll gladly pay that thing. But it, it, it just being generous. And finally, number four, and this is important, have poor friends. Many rich people don't have poor friends. They get all these Republican ideas in their head and shit. Start thinking they're good people. You ain't fucking good, bro. You got an inheritance, okay? Yeah. You stole an idea or whatever. <laughs> You're lucky. Rich people are lucky oftentimes. And if you hang out with only other rich, rich people, you start to thinking, hey, maybe I'm smart. Maybe I know things that other people... You don't know shit. Eli Musk is a fucking moron, okay? <laughs> His dad had a jewel mined in South Africa. People died mining this shit. And the fucking motherfucker acts like he's so smart. He's not so smart. He's a dumbass. Get vaccinated. <laughs> Have poor friends. And, you know, the, the good thing about having poor friends, too, is that sometimes they just won't be able to do the thing. And that means you won't be able to do the thing. You'll feel limited. You'll feel like a fucking human being. All right. And that's the goal. Oh, you can't afford it. Okay. If you can't spring for it, then it'll be like, oh, all right, let's just do something else. Let's hang out in the park like Christ. Huh? <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. going back to the word of uh, Christ here, mm -hmm. he says it's harder for a camel to make it through the eye of a needle. It's right? easier for a oh. camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. So here I have a problem with the uh, whole don't buy lunch every time thing. Yes. Right? I think you should be siphoning out this money. You know what I mean? The eye of the needle gets bigger the more money you spend, in you my mean, opinion. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean, I just say every other time because I just, I know I've, I've been in the heads of rich people. I know Republicans. <laughs> and uh, I love Republicans in a lot of ways. Uh, it's very, they're very nice people. I don't want to, uh, you know, a lot of church people are Republicans. I don't, I, and this is pre-Trump when I'm talking this way. If you voted for Trump, I don't know what the fuck you are. I'm not <laughs> talking about you. You're a fucking moron. Uh, I, and also, there's there's also ways that your head's broken. I don't even want to call you a bad person. But just like I said, if you voted for Trump, I don't know what to say to you. I'm talking about just regular conservative Republican people from 20 years ago. I know you. Like, my dream, like, oh, man, like, I love a nice dumb blonde Republican woman. I'm sorry. I can't. Like Megan McCain, like, man, like, you don't understand it. Yeah. I just learn so much. It's like, I just want that life where everything's so simple. We're so smart and dumb. Yeah. And you're just like looking at her and making babies. I love that shit. I wish I could get that, but I can't. But I, I, I would imagine that rich people, like famous people, which I've been around both of them, they don't like to feel taken advantage of. Yes. So I'm trying to walk them to that. This is that first step, Jordan. Oh, okay, okay. I know what you're saying is, yeah, you should be paying for everything all the time. Um, I think I think when poor people or working class people a lot of times get rich, that they do take care of people, sometimes to the people's detriment, sometimes to their own. But I'm just trying to baby steps with the rich people every other time. Yeah. Once you start to feel the love in you and shit, if you can afford it, of course, buy lunch every time. That's not going to hurt anyone, you know? But baseline. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> baseline. We're talking every other lunch. Here. Baby steps. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to turn all these rich people off. <laughs> we need you in the movement. <laughs> we need you in the Patreon. Uh, but yeah, definitely have that. The key, of course, to being a good rich person is to approach all of that stuff with humility and gratefulness to, un to, to understand that you are lucky in the position that you've got. Uh, and then let's finally do this last chunk. It's verse... Uh, James chapter 1, verse 12. 
And blessed is the man who perseveres under trial because when he has stood that test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love them. Damn, food. Powerful, right? Yeah. <laughs> blessed is he who has persevered through that trial. Dude, everything you out of this book, James, yeah. so far, has gone back to stand-up for me, dude. Yeah, that's okay. So when, when I say that verse, what are you hearing? Uh, last night I bombed hard on a lawnmower joke I told you about. Uh, and if I persevere, dude, that's a good three minute chunk right there. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, I mean, that's that all of what you just said is true. Stand up doing that. You suck for the first couple of years. Yeah. You get good. You start to suck again. Art and life. I think all of that when you're doing life, right. When you are pushing yourself all the time, just like he says earlier, you have to have faith that you're doing the right thing. But if you stand that test of time. Uh, if you go to your the five to ten open mics a week, you're miserable and you're good, uh, but you're good. You will become a good comic. Yeah, uh, you'll get this crown of life. If you you do that with exercise, you know, uh, I I'm in the habit. You know, it's been a few months now, but I'm in the habit of going hiking three three times a week. Where I wake up at six thirty in the morning and I go. I'm in the habit now. I don't ever want to lose that. Because uh, I remember what it's like to be fatter, 25 pounds heavier than I was. I want to keep losing weight. Not because I, you know, I've got a beautiful face. Lord knows. <laughs> uh, my wife's beautiful. It's fine. But I'm just getting to the age where I've got to really be concerned. If I if I, I have a kid in the next couple of years, I don't want to die when I'm 61. To Damn. pull a Gandolfini on, you know, his poor kid. Oh, my God. Gandolfini's poor kid found him. When he was only 11 years old. Jesus Christ. I want to have faith. I'm a non-monogamous, polyamorous person. Um, I do get, uh, a lot of why I even talk about it is because I have faith that there's two or three people out there in my life that I'm going to meet. Uh, but it gets very tempting. I'm telling you, some of these young girls at the Chatterbox, they try to take a run at the God like a 23-year-old. This week, 23-year-old comes up. I'm telling you. The chemistry is <laughs> undeniable. Yeah. I mean, it's really cute little thick uh, Mexican chick. And I've never seen it before. A real pretty smile, all that stuff. And her energy, she was just being really funny. And like, and then she came up and she came back to me uh, to get more drinks. And then I was just like, how old are you? She was like 23. And I was like, oof. oof. <laughs> I made that noise. I was like, oof. <laughs> I did that. And she's like, why do you ask? I was like, nothing, nothing. <laughs> but you could tell. She Then she was like, started to laugh and stuff more. Yeah. She was like, oh, okay, all right. And uh, I was, and then later on she comes back and I was like, "Listen, you're very cute. I, you're very funny. I, I really like you, but you're too too young." And she's like, "Age ain't nothing but a number, you know." Blah blah blah. Now I do I do worry about that because I'm like, okay, well, it's funny because when I talk to other polyamorous people and stuff like that, they're saying, "Steve, she's 23. She's not a kid. She knows what she's getting into." And maybe that's true, but in this particular instance, check this out. This is you're gonna see. So. She's just drinking more and more. And then her friend comes, sits next to her. They're, they got to leave. Uh, uh, and she's like, but she's like, no, I want to stay. And I'm like, oh, no. Like, oh, no. I, I was like, she's going to try to stay till the end. So when I close down and something, and then I, I'm like, no, I can't. I, I just can't because she's too drunk. I don't, I don't, I would want not want to take advantage in that way also. Yeah. But she's just staying there and staying there. And her friend's like, come on, we got to go. And she's like, no, I'm not going. And then at some point she covers her face. Like this, like she's just like, <laughs> she's like, she's like, clo like closing. I'm like, man, I don't. she didn't seem that drunk, but I know that she drank a lot. Oh, yeah. And at some point, some guy buys her a shot of whiskey, which she wasn't drinking the whiskey. Oh my God. So she does the shot of whiskey. She's covering her face and stuff like this. Then at some point, like she like looks up and she had thrown up on herself <laughs> oh my and like there was like kind of stuff on her face and stuff <laughs> and uh and she's like i'm so embarrassed her friend oh. and stuff and i just kind of walked away fast because i didn't want her to be embarrassed for herself. yeah yeah uh, but i honestly because i've been studying the bible too much i was like I'm glad I resisted that temptation. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I was like, I'm glad I resisted temptation. And now I shall receive the crown of life. Yeah. You know, that is a regular woman that hasn't thrown up on herself. <laughs> That's a gotcha food. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much uh, for joining us this week. Make sure you subscribe at Read the Bible with Me with Steve Hernandez. Uh, rate us and review us uh, on the iTunes podcast. Subscribe on Spotify. Tell all your friends about us. And then, of course, we'll see you on Wednesday, September 1st at 9 o'clock at the Yard. Buy tickets on my Instagram. Uh, it's going to be a hell of a show. 
Uh, I think that's all. Uh, I love you. And uh, do the right thing out there. Uh, when you want to forgive someone, when you want to love someone, that's God. Remember that. And also, buy every other lunch, rich fucks. <laughs> <laughs>